If there was a missing piece of information that is costing you money now, or could cost you money in the future, when would you want to find out about it? Ideally, you would want to learn about it right now. It's best to learn these critical facts before you make any financial decisions, because not knowing could have profound effects on your financial future. One of the best ways to make money is to avoid losing it in the first place. So we focus on all the missing facts to keep your money from falling through the cracks, and we engineer tax strategies to reduce burdens on your income. Welcome to the Roadmap to Retirement podcast with Ken New from Pinnacle Financial Wealth Management. As a fiduciary advisor, Ken focuses on creating individualized holistic plans rather than cookie cutter portfolios. Listen in as Ken and his guest experts explore key retirement and tax strategies that every pre-retiree should consider to reach their pinnacle. Now, on to the show. Ken New and I have been talking about health in retirement for a few episodes now. We've discussed the importance of having a plan, basically a roadmap in place, so you know that if you experience a medical condition or an injury, you will be taken care of through retirement. We've also talked about how you can leverage a long-term care policy as both a health and financial strategy. And Ken has emphasized how important it is to speak with your loved ones about your future health plan. Of course, you want to make sure everyone is on the same page, right? I'm Patrice Socorro. And if you did not catch those earlier episodes, I encourage you to go back and give them a listen. Well, Ken is here now to expand this discussion of health and retirement with a move beyond the purely physical, and he has a special guest. But Ken, first, the phrase, health is wealth. What do you think of it? Well, first of all, I, I do have a, a special guest today with us, uh, Suzanne Elliott with Hot Yoga on the Island. And uh, I'm a financial advisor, and Suzanne's a yoga school instructor. And she instructs on health and fitness. And so how is that really correlated? Well, I think Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi said it. He said, it is health that is true wealth. So what is health? I think health is physical, of course, your physical health, your energy, how you feel. But it's also mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, your inner self that projects the best version of you when you have your physical health and your mental health in balance. So it's very difficult to have true physical health without having mental health, emotional and spiritually. Mental health is connected to us, the physical health, and the physical health is connected to the emotional health. So why is it some are perfectly happy living paycheck to paycheck while others are worth millions and they're worried sick. Well, the traditional view of health is money brings happiness. If you have enough money, it'll solve any problem. Well, money and therefore wealth is a tool. It's a means of solving a lifestyle desire, accomplishing objectives. Healthy wealth comes when you have the way that you think about money aligned with your core values. So just like getting professional health and professional wealth planning, I have benefited from professional health planning. I benefited from the professional expertise in the area of health for the better of two decades. I benefited from a core healthy habit of meditation, journaling, and hot yoga. I'm going to talk a little bit about Suzanne Elliott. She is the principal and superintendent of the largest yoga and Pilates school in Brevard County. Master teacher in all ages and levels. And H-E-A-R-T nonprofit organizations. Partners with KBB and the Litter Quitter and adopt Shore programs teaching yoga, and hosting cleanups on Saturdays for sunrise. Known for community outreach, Suzanne works with children, teens, special needs, athletes, retirees for rehabilitation and recovery from injuries and surgeries. Suzanne, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ken. 
So tell us a little bit about your personal journey. My personal journey as a kid growing up, I always loved exercising, being outdoors in nature. And I learned from my elderly, my grandparents, and I had a grandmother that was very active. And then when she couldn't be active anymore, she gained a lot of weight and she had sugar, you know, she had a sugar issue with diabetes. So then I watched my mom follow those same footsteps. And I decided I can't follow those same footsteps after I saw how my grandmother couldn't hardly walk. I saw my husband's grandmother lose her limbs, her legs. And I was just really concerned about diabetes and having good health. So I wanted to focus on that. I saw my husband's father have a major heart attack. And all of us, all of the sons got tested and had very high cholesterol. And we started reading more about how we could change those things by being more active and by choosing better foods that we ate. And we were influenced by a neighbor that happened to be a vegetarian. So we started eating more of a, a vegetarian diet. One summer, I was very stressed out before having to go back to work at Meridon High School as a guidance counselor, as a cheerleading coach, and to competitive cheerleading. And I really felt burnout and needed a break. And so Joe and I took a little trip down to South Florida for a cheap week to regroup ourselves. And we ended up at a health spa. At that health spa, there was a doctor there who, you know, met with us and explained what were our goals to us and how we could reach those goals. And he also explained every week about the importance of food and how to eat better. It was there that I learned how to be a vegan, to eat better healthy foods that were more whole foods. Then I would know that I wouldn't have a cholesterol issue if I wasn't eating the cholesterol in meats and cheese. And then I would also be able to fight diabetes, what my family was plagued with. So diet was our number one changeover. And then while we were there at the health spa, we learned some yoga. And I was very intrigued about the yoga. We came back. I studied more about the yoga and was always, you know, trying to stretch and do sun salutes and different things. And then I realized I had a lot of back problems. And those back problems took me to a chiropractor who said, you have scoliosis. And he didn't really know why I had scoliosis. No one in my family has it. So I said, I bet I've, you know, done something bad back there from competitive cheerleading in Kentucky. When we competed in my years, we did three high stunts and people had to jump off of us on the very top. And when I was a senior in high school, I had to be the base. You're the biggest one on the team. You're on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I think that affected my spine as well as doing lots of gymnastics on a hardwood floor for basketball. Basketball was king in Kentucky. We always cheered at all the basketball games, doing backflips and everything and jumping off of those three high stunts. So I think I ended up with a little fracture. They found that years later when I did a bone density test. And so then I took the chiropractor's advice about doing hot yoga. He says, it's really, he says, I have the same issue in my spine. He said, I found it to help um, the curvature in the spine. When you think of something that is metal, like your bones are very hard to move. He said, think of the metal of a car. When they're building and designing the car metal, they're going to heat it up and mold it to be the shape they want. So he says, think of your hot yoga as that. So I did the hot yoga and I said, okay, I really like it now. At first it was hard. And I said, I really want to teach it because I saw such great results with my husband and I both doing the practice. So I went off to the teacher training and there I learned for nine weeks, I had to do the class twice a day, thought, okay, if the heat doesn't kill me, then, you know, I, you know, it should be a good, it should be a good practice. <laughs> and when I came back from the nine weeks of the training, Training. I had done a study with my chiropractor. Let's really test it. Let's see how well it works. If I'm going to be doing it twice a day, we should be able to see some effective results. So my scoliosis improved two degrees. So now I'm starting to straighten back up. I was concerned about scoliosis because I had an aunt and I saw Joe's mom deal with scoliosis. And it's not real pretty when you start to age and your spine is taking over and you're curving every which way except straight it starts to affect your organs. It starts to affect your health, how you breathe, because it's really going to affect the lungs. And that's where we start running into issues as we age. And then you're start going to have that little hunch over, have those kind of issues with your posture. 
And so it's better to have good posture because we're holding our bodies up and postures that will help us breathe better, eat better, digest our food better, help all the systems in the body work better by sitting up better, by walking better, by running better, and by standing better. So then I really valued the yoga even more. So after my teacher training, we saw the results improve my spine. I also was able to uh, decrease all the pain I had from sciatica. So I had a fracture on the spine. They found through the bone density test. So that discovered why I had scoliosis and no one else in my family did. And so that fracture was causing my spine to keep sinking and curving. So now that I know where the problem is, I can fix that more with my concentration and determination to keep the spine straight, concentrating on that when I'm sitting, standing, or working and not doing yoga. So the yoga helps me reflect back on always having good posture, being aware of that. So yoga takes us into self-awareness, being more aware. We can have all the money in the world, but we may not be happy because we don't have good health. To be happy, we need to have good health. And so if you don't have good health, think of all the times you've been sick, you don't feel well, and you don't do as many things, you can't do as many things because you're worried about other something that's happened to you with an injury or because you have, like when COVID was here, we were all concerned about our lungs and the effect, the long-term effect that has on our lungs and the long-term effect it has on our brain. All that soft tissue in the body can be affected by a little virus that can be in our bodies. So my personal health journey from scoliosis, then I found out I had hip dysplasia, which I was born with, and I did have to have double hip replacement because I was beyond the age of how they usually fix hip dysplasia, and I was walking and it was hurting so bad that every step I took was a pain that would, you know, shoot up to my hips and my lower back. And after a long journey in New York and walking everywhere, I came back and said, I have to do something different. So I went to the doctors and I went to seven different um, osteopaths and osteosurgeons um, uh, and got all their different advice and took that to, um, okay, I'm going to have to have the hip replacement. Having the hip replacement was a big decision. I was only in my mid fifties and having that hip replacement also made me decide, oh, what are you going to do long term if the hip joints don't last forever? We had already seen my uh, my husband's parents deal with knee replacement. The knee replacements lasted so long. Now she's in her 80s. Now those knee replacements aren't working good anymore. She can barely walk. And every step she took was a pain in the knee and a reminder that the hip joints aren't working that they put in her body. So it's too late when you're in your 80s, they back off like, well, you're a little too old or you're not in good shape or you're not healthy enough for us to go back and replace those joints for you to recover from the replacement. And of course, you know, having to go under the knife, your brain is going to be cut off oxygen every time that you have to go under the knife and be out for that surgery. And so my mom dealt with Alzheimer's and Joe's parents also dealt with Alzheimer's. We didn't want that to take over our life and not really enjoy quality living when we age. So we really focused on really trying to take care of ourselves after seeing the issues we had in our family, having our own issues, um, having the hips replaced having my spine straighten up from the yoga. So basically I made a vow to myself. I really couldn't stop what I'm doing. If I stop, then I know my life is going to be more downhill. And I've worked with plenty of elderly people in nursing homes, my own parents, Joe's own parents, and we've worked with those in assisted living. And the biggest issue is not being able to enjoy life and giving up hope when you lose that quality of living and you can see their depression hit. You can see that they can't move. They don't have many choices. So it was a really scary thing to see. And again, realize I want to be able to have a good quality living. So that's what really made me change my habits. And when we were at the health spa, we were able to learn more about eating healthier foods taking care of our body from the inside out. The hot yoga that we practice also helps us focus on having a better body from the inside out. So those were the things that really helped change my own personal health journey. When we first moved to Florida, 
We were junk food. Um, we ate fast foods and we did all kinds of bad things. And it was the yoga that made me be more aware of how to take care of my body, how to take care of the body from the inside out. Yeah, you covered a lot of ground there. Amazing story. I've known you for all these years and I didn't know all of those details. That's awesome. So I know that I've met others in the studio as well who've had major health issues, hip replacements, knee replacements, those kinds of things, and have self-healed themselves um, through all this hard work. And I know that we refer to very often, I hear it referred to as an open eye meditation in doing a hot yoga uh, routine. Um, maybe you could speak to that a little bit. Yes, the open eye meditation, the practice for yoga where you're learning stillness, which is Hatha yoga, that's learning to be still and practice in your, in your body. Then the other aspect of this practice is called Raja yoga. Raja stands for the mind, having the ability to have a strong mind. To walk into a heated room, you have to have a strong mind. To live in Florida and go outside and play during the summers, you had to have a strong mind. So we speak a lot about meditation being the five aspects of the mind that are the most important for you to make any type of decisions, health-wise, wealth-wise, and that is concentration, self-control or discipline, determination, patience, and faith. Practicing those five aspects of the mind come into play in the moment, learning to be in the moment. That's when we can be the happiest and the healthiest, not worrying about the future, not worrying about what happened in the past, but really trying to be in the present moment. So we practice those five aspects of the mind so that we can have that concentration, the self-control, determination, patience, and faith. Those are the most important aspects that we practice through the open eye meditation and the movement in the class with the physical asanas, which are also called postures. Yeah, that's, that's terrific. That's a great, I, I love the way that you have brought all five of those aspects together uh, because the the latest research shows that physical and mental health are correlated. And very often we don't think of it that way, or at least I've spoke to people and you know have the intimate I've I've they've intimated from our conversations that they're really two separate things. And I just really think that they're intertwined. They're very, very correlated and related uh, directly to each other. Yes, you're correct. They are one and the same. You got to focus on both. You can't have one without the other. And so that's what's important through our practice daily and taking care of our mind and our body through practices that help us do that. Think of, um, I'm a big gym rat, used to go to the gym all the time. I would go in, do your cardio. And then I started noticing I'm not really in there when I'm in there. I'm looking at other things I need to be doing. I'm on the, or watching the TV while I'm on the treadmill, not really in tune with what's happening in my body. How am I breathing? How's my heart rate? I keep an eye on that with the numbers, but I really wasn't into what I'm doing. Like in the yoga practice, and especially in a hot room, you have to be in that moment, what you're doing, so you can survive that moment and get to the next moment. In the gym, they started giving us all kinds of things. I remember even now the gyms bring in pizza, you know, for you to do. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you're teaching us all the wrong things. That is not what I want to be a part of anymore. And so the five aspects of the mind and are and using the mind and the body are the same and in one, especially in a Hatha yoga practice and a Raja yoga practice in the hot room that we practice for more healing, original types of working out and therapeutic types of working out. Yeah, that's... That's great. Um, maybe you could speak um, a, a moment to a couple more things and then we'll wrap things up here for today. But um, maybe for a moment you can speak to uh, someone who has never done hot yoga and, and, and how it might benefit. Uh, we know how it might benefit them, but how would they uh, be able to benefit um, and how can they get get uh, connected with the uh, hot yoga of Merritt Island and get and, and, it's, and discover this for themselves? 
Yeah, we try to make it as easy as possible. They can go online. They can stop by the studio for a physical registration. They can do a little um, orientation, ask many questions they want. They can call us, reach us on the website. And most people will come in because they're thinking, it's hot. I can lose weight. What you're really going to lose is weight plus lose stress and anxiety, lose stiffness and improve your body for flexibility and improving old injuries that have created tightness inside the body. Like those little scar tissues every time you've been bruised, that's deep, deep tissue called fascia. So you're going to be able to release all of that and improve your energy levels and feel like you're going to live longer and live a good life. So just register online, come in and see us. We're willing to help anybody that has questions that are very eager in improving their life, improving their mind and having a better outlook on life so that your life in the elderly years is going to be more efficient, more quality. Yeah, not to mention with all that sweating, you get rid of a lot of toxins and things of that nature as well. But yeah, uh, yeah. so this is appropriate for everyone. I mean, major injuries. Uh, I've seen uh, pregnant women come into the studio and there's special uh, poses that they can use and things of that nature. So pretty amazing stuff. One other thing I wanted to get, though, is you have coached up some world champions uh, in the hot yoga arena. And so uh, maybe you could just comment on that a little bit. You've co coached some very special athletes, in other words, uh, through the hot yoga program. Yes, I've been able to recruit some of my students that I see in the practice that can take those five aspects of the mind to a different level. So you can really pick on those people that are aware of their bodies. Most people are not aware of their bodies in a yoga class. They haven't thought about aligning up their hips or anything that is body related. I can start to pick out a student that has that high concentration and great self-control and discipline and their eagerness and determination to come back and do more because they're seeing the results in their body. So I've been able to pick from kids to elderly to adults um, hey, why don't you try some yoga sport? I especially recruit those athletes that have been injured in the past from their other sports, from repetitive motion. And it helps replace that missing sport in their life where they had that discipline, they had a goal. And so sometimes it turns them on to a whole new realm of life back into being in sport, but doing a healthy sport, one that fixed their body from the other sport. So a lot of people that participate in yoga sport are former athletes that have been injured in their past sports that come to the practice. Our current world yoga champion, we just got back from India. She's our two-time world champion. She had a very stressful life as a young kid, as a ballerina, working on trying to be a classical ballerina. She was interested in that since she was seven years old and working and working her body and again, a ballerina is just like any other sport, a racket sport or a ball sport. You're going to do some of the same things over and over and over that it starts to wear your body down. So um, she was wearing her body down. She was also being, you know, in a lot of pressure where she had an eating disorder. So she found the yoga as the way to help heal her body, heal her mind and make better decisions about her health, her internal well-being. And so she took that discipline that she had from ballet and was able to apply it to the yoga. And it gave her the world championships as we went to India. Um, USA competed against India. India won 16 medals, but 13 of those medals were in the kids division. They start very, very young. India is behind the yoga sport because they want everyone in every country to recognize the value of yoga the value of yoga sport and that it can give people purpose. That's what sport usually does is gives us all purpose and determination and goals and, and working together with people or coaches. So they take it up a notch by wanting it to go to the Olympics. So America has only been competing about 20 years in the events. And since yoga got real popular about that time years ago, and in India, they've been competing for 50 to 75 years, and it always started with the kids. And so we were just really honored. I think we took eight medals, and we took the World uh, Yoga Champion home with us. 
in the male division, I mean, in the female division for women that were 50 plus and as well as the women that were 18 or older. And both of those came from America. So we're really proud of the yoga team and the yoga sport and people that can get involved at another level to improve their life. That's what the whole practice is about, yoga and using it for therapy and then taking it to another notch to even improve your body, your mind even more to give you more purpose. Great. Kudos to you and everything that's going on in the worldwide yoga arena Um, and truly as you've explained, um, health is wealth and hot yoga on the Island is a, is a great option for making that happen. And again, you can reach the hot yoga on the Island on the internet, look them up online and contact Suzanne or contact our office. And we'll be uh, happy to pass along information as well. Uh, hot yoga on the Island is on Merritt Island in Florida. And again, you can contact me and my office, Ken new at pinnacle, Financial Wealth Management, 321-454-3623. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to the Roadmap to Retirement podcast. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. Visit our website at www.pinnaclefinancialwealthmgmt.com or give us a call at 321-454-3623. Securities offered through Center Street Securities, Inc., CSS, a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Center Street Securities Advisors, CSA, a SEC-registered investment advisor. Pinnacle Financial Wealth Management, CSS, and CSA are independent entities. Discussions are meant to be general in nature and may not be suitable for all investors. Please consult a tax professional regarding any tax implications.